you know, we've been at war uh, for 20 years fighting, uh, fighting the, the, the war on terror. And we've had this kind of geopolitical arbitrage that happened uh, and this perception that um, our retrenchment from the Middle East um, can be applied to to state on state conflict. And, and that's just it's not true. I think, you know, the biggest risk I think that we have, uh, like Aaron said, is the uh, the withdrawal of American troops from the Middle East and uh, this growing sentiment within the U.S. population, I, I think of, um, you know, Congressman Matt Gates uh, recently introduced a, a privileged resolution to uh, get out of Somalia, get out of um, Syria. Uh, Nigeria will be next, I, I bet. And, um, you know, there's there's members of Congress on both sides of the aisle who are in support of this. I think we're just doing ourselves a disservice by applying the the lessons learned uh, from Afghanistan and Iraq uh, to any future conflict. I think what well, we have to keep in mind, I, you know, this, uh, this perception of, of, you know, dusting off the Cold War uh, playbook uh, since Russia invaded Ukraine um, is, is wrong. Um, you know, certainly there are lessons to be learned, but we're in a different era. And, uh, you know, if you asked me last week about uh, how we go about this, you know, you, you think about military doctrine and, um, you know, tank squadrons and air superiority. Well, you asked me on Monday uh, after this weekend's, um, this weekend's events, it would probably be better to watch The Godfather or uh, ask the proverbial Tony Soprano about what's going to happen in Russia next. Because uh, you know the Wagner Group is, is seems to me like they're uh, consolidating power and and going to go after Putin next. So, I mean, what am I saying here? The whole point is that we have to be very flexible. We have to uh, we we can't apply past lessons to the future. Sure, we can anticipate, um, but the point is you can't take your eye off of terrorism. You can't take your eye off the Middle East. Um, and if you want to learn a lesson from history, the Middle East has been a linchpin in geopolitics uh, for, I don't know, five centuries now um, and how we, we've gone about warfare. And so, you know, and, and I run the Special Operations Association of America. So uh, obviously I'm biased towards special operations, uh, you know, and we've got a couple hundred troops in, in Somalia. We've got less than a thousand in Syria. And we are force multipliers. We are the perfect people for the, this type of job to maintain stability with a small footprint. And, uh, you know, we, we, need an, we need a better education program for members of Congress, the U.S. population, and we need to send more soft troops out into those countries, which, by, by the way, so a perfect uh, caveat here. You know, SOCOM, or Special Operations Command, has more than 4,000 troops deployed in more than 80 countries uh, for, for the past 30 years doing this in country teams and in embassies around the world. This is our job. Not every uh, solution is a military solution, but uh, we're critical thinkers and we can make this happen. And we've, we've done it all. And so uh, I look forward to the discussion. And uh, yeah, thanks.